This morning, the London Stock Exchange just posted a letter of intention to float. Basically, Raspberry Pi is officially interested in being a public stock on the London Stock Exchange. Now, first of all, Raspberry Pi Trading, who wants to go public, is not the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the nonprofit wing. But the Pi Foundation may still be the majority shareholder, and that's not 100% clear in the document. Uh, but I would imagine it's something like that, or at least there'll be a very large shareholder and, and benefit from this. Um, what's really interesting here, I think the first thing is that it's the London Stock Exchange and not like NASDAQ, not the, the US stock markets. And it's interesting because companies on the London Stock Exchange tend to have a little bit of lower valuations. Like if you're a US startup and you have nothing to prove, like no profits, um, if you have a product that's all just you know magical pixie dust and you use a SPAC or something to list yourself on the stock exchange, you can get giant valuations, you get tons of institutional money for pretty much nothing. Uh, the London Stock Exchange is not quite as much like that. It seems like there's not as much funny money. So one thing that some people are wondering is maybe this is a signal that this isn't all about just getting lots of money. Uh, a lot of startups will start up and their whole purpose is either cash out or get bought and make tons and tons of money and then do it again, rinse and repeat. Venture capital is all about that here in the US. It's kind of annoying because a lot of good ideas get buried when companies are bought out and things. But this seems to be a little bit more like they want to take the company and make it bigger, which has its benefits and drawbacks. But it's, it's interesting to note also that ARM which Raspberry Pi uses little ARM processors. They're very efficient uh, CPUs in, in the things. ARM was listed in the US. Uh, some people speculate because a lot of US companies use ARM and, and there was more pressure to have US investment in ARM, even though it was originally a UK company. So that's interesting too. Uh, reading through the document, there are some un interesting things I, I dug out. Like for instance, it says so far they've sold 60 million SBCs, so 60 million different Raspberry Pi models, 7.4 million last year. And uh, we don't have all the numbers on Pi 5 yet, but uh, Eben Upton's been very, very open about the numbers. Uh, every time I've talked to him and other people have talked to him about it, which I think is really cool because it gives you kind of a, a size of the market uh, that you can think about and, and reason about and put numbers to. Uh, and the, the potential market that they estimate in this document is over $20 billion, with the majority being industrial and embedded computing. So, you know, I've done a lot of videos on many different things. A lot of them are for like industrial uh, automation controllers and uh, embedded devices in robotics and in sensors and things. So that is like 70, more than 70% of the market for Raspberry Pi is there. They also have a pretty substantial market for education, for STEM, things like that. Um, but I think that what that shows is why they were so interested in keeping their business partners happy when we had all those major shortages the past few years at the expense of a lot of individuals in the maker community and maybe education, um, colleges and things being a bit angry at them. I think that for them, from a business perspective, that's it makes perfect sense. From a community sp perspective, there's still a lot of debate and a lot of people still have a lot of anger. Um, but I, I think that does go to explain some of that. When 70% of your profit comes from uh, that market, you're not just going to turn and abandon it because that would be kind of the death wish for your, your profits. And again, this is not a value judgment of whether, whether or not that's good. That's just, that's the business reason. And this document is all about the business. Uh, it said that their 2023 revenues were $270 million. That's how much money they brought in total, uh, with a profit around $40 million, uh, depending on the kind of accounting you're doing. And that's a pretty big business. And, you know, unlike all those AI startups, unlike Rabbit and all these scams out there, uh, crypto scams and AI scams and things, there are a couple AI businesses that make some sense, but it's insane that they're being valued in the billions of dollars when they haven't actually done anything useful for society. Uh, that's that's a pretty big business, and it's actually profitable, which is interesting. Like it's it's sadly very rare to find a profitable business going into a stock market nowadays, uh, at least in the tech space. But I, I thought it was also funny, uh, going back to the community side, that the community mentions in this document excludes Twitter or X or whatever you call it nowadays. Uh, it's funny because the Raspberry Pi Twitter account actually has like 600 and something million followers or 600 and something thousand followers. That's actually more followers on Twitter that they don't use for like a year now than on all the other platforms. Uh, 
not combined. I think if you combine them all, it's a little bit more than that, but it's, it's like substantial. You know, I'm still on all these different platforms and it's just interesting to observe that over time. Um, another thing that I saw, which I don't like that much the way that they phrase this from a business perspective, it makes sense from a maker and tinker and open source perspective. I don't like it, but this is also hardware and I'm more of a software guy. Uh, but they mentioned the custom silicon a lot. So the RP2040, the RP1, and I'm sure whatever other chips they're uh, conjuring up for the next generations, uh, they, they describe them as unique, feature-rich, and non-clonable silicon that's unavailable to the broader market. Now, when the RP1 was released, I was mentioning like, it'd be cool to have a little, a little PCI Express drop-in card for a PC where you could basically add a Raspberry Pi to your PC that way. It could give you all the GPIO interfaces and and the camera and display and all that and just using PCI Express. The way that that's stated, it doesn't sound like that would be something that would happen or that uh, companies could buy the RP1 and integrate it into their motherboard or something. It'd be really cool if that happened. I don't know if that will ever happen, but that phrase just makes it sound like that's a competitive advantage for Raspberry Pi. And, you know, I would rather they were more open with their chips. They have very good chips and they have very good silicon designers. Uh, but it'd be cool to have a little more openness on that side. Now, when we get to different statements, I'll let you dig through the whole document. I'll link to it. Uh, but Eben Upton says that Raspberry Pi enthusiasts will see the next phase of our de development offer unprecedented opportunities for creativity and innovation. Our commitment to low-cost computing, a fundamental part of what is special about Raspberry Pi, is unchanged. Now, there's a lot that you can unpack. This is a very corporate speak kind of paragraph. Um, but I think the big thing, the bottom line is, and a lot of people are already commenting, I'm sure, before they even listen to this part of the video, uh, the sentiment towards Raspberry Pi changed a lot after all the Pi shortages that started in you know, 2020, 2021, around the pandemic era. And there are so many reasons for that. I already talked about that in many videos. You can just go back on the Jeff Gearling channel. Uh, but the biggest thing is a there's a perception that Raspberry Pi raised prices, which sort of... Um, I, I get the understanding that, you know, because they had availability issues and scalpers made the street price go way up, they perceived that as Raspberry Pi raising prices. That didn't happen. The Pi 4 was still sold at MSRP and every once in a while you could find one during the shortages, but it was very hard. But, uh, the, you know, the, the people that I don't like about that, it's the scalpers. It's, it's kind of like blaming Charmin when the toilet paper shortages hit. Like Charmin was making as many as they could. Uh, now, on the flip side, Charmin didn't prioritize businesses when they were selling the toilet paper, uh, but the scalpers are really the, the people that are mourning. Now, on the flip side, there's the Pi 5, which did increase the base price for the 4 gig model versus the 1 gig Raspberry Pi 4 was 35, and the 4 gig Pi 5 was 60. So, uh, you know, there's that. Um, and really, the bottom line on, on all of the value proposition and the cost and all that, the Pi Zero 2W is probably the best Pi for overall value right now. You're still getting a four core 64-bit processor. You're getting uh, most of the interfaces and things that you'd ever need for a project. It uses less power and it's 15 bucks. Like that's, that's actually a great deal. And uh, in a lot of cases that can be used instead of like a tiny microcontroller and do a lot more because you're running full Linux. Uh, there are limitations on it and stuff, but, you know, for value, it, I, I don't see the argument that, like, Raspberry Pi jacked up the prices. They didn't jack up the prices. They just managed availability in a way that I think most of us individuals didn't like that much. But on the other side, mini PCs, like I covered a GMK Tech mini PC in a video on my main channel. Uh, mini PCs have really, really gotten cheaper and better. That's the key is that there were always cheap mini PCs, but they were terrible. Uh, Intel has upped their game on efficiency to the point where they're still not as efficient as ARM processors, but they're a lot more to the point where you don't have to have a giant fan or have something blown out tons of heat all day. So the N95 and N100 CPUs especially are, are pretty cool at that. And uh, from the very low end, microcontrollers have been kind of punching up a bit. Uh, a lot of times you would use a Raspberry Pi for like a remote sensor that needed Wi-Fi or uh, things like that. Nowadays, a lot of microcontrollers, whether it's using an ESP32 or a Raspberry Pi Pico W or something else, microcontrollers have enough processing power, they have enough interfaces, they have LoRa, they have Wi-Fi, they have Bluetooth, they have Zigbee, they have all these interfaces that you can use, and uh, the software ecosystem around them, from ESP Home to MicroPython, 
has made it so much more approachable that there's really less reason to buy a Raspberry Pi for those low-end things. So the Raspberry Pi 5 is in a weird spot. It's it's not the, you know, it's 35 bucks, just go buy it. And it's also not the full desktop that a mini PC can be. It's somewhere in between. So I think the, the total market for the Pi 5 is different than the market for the Pi 4. And I'd like to see where Raspberry Pi goes in the future. I, I really think that a Pi 500 could be their killer app. Um, a, a full desktop keyboard uh, form factor thing for education, for things like that. But we'll see where they go with that. Um, I don't know anything about it yet. But I, I'd had, I have mentioned a couple times, I really want to see it. I'd love to see a little bit better keyboard, and I'd love to see an NVMe slot inside. Uh, but nothing really changed in my sentiment personally since the video that I posted to my main channel a month or two ago. I said in that video that I'm disappointed in an IPO, but I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a business. They want to make money. This is one way to make more money and, and bring in more money so that they can invest more in production, in design, in silicon. Uh, so if you really want my, my thoughts on that and the community side, uh, go check out the main channel video. Um, it has a lot more on th what the IPO means for the community. This, this video is just a quick one to show some of the things I picked up on in the actual uh, the, the intention to list. And uh, we'll see where it goes. I, I don't know when this would happen. I, I remember reading, I think, in the register that, that Eben had said something about soon. I don't know when soon is. But uh, anyway, that's all for this one. And today's uh, outro will be for a YouTuber who um, I am saying some prayers for. He has is going through some health issues. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys.